So here we're going to look at the parabola. R of t is t comma t squared. Notice the y value t squared is the x value squared. So we know that this is the graph y equals x squared. Let's take a look at that for a second. So I've got x of t is t, y of t is t squared, z of t is zero using this app. This is the three-dimensional perspective, but this is just a two-dimensional curve. So we can go ahead and graph it this way. What I want you to notice here is that the curvature is always changing. As t, or in this case, x gets larger, the parabola becomes closer and closer to a straight line, and a straight line has zero curvature. So when is it curving the fastest? When is the curvature the greatest, looking at this picture? And the answer is at the vertex, at zero, when x is zero, which is also when t is zero. So we want to go ahead and construct the curvature for this function. We recognize it will be changing where the last example we did had constant curvature. So what's our rule? What's our definition of curvature? We said curvature was the magnitude of dt ds, but there's no s here. So what do we have to do? If there's no S in the representation of R of T, we've got to put one in and um, we'll do it this way by saying DT DT over DS DT. DT DT is the derivative of big T with respect to little t. That's T prime of T over DS DT which is the magnitude of t prime of t over what? The rate of change of arc length, remember s is arc length with respect to time. So distance traveled with respect to time, miles per hour, what is that? That speed or the magnitude of the velocity, magnitude of r prime of t. So what do I have to do first? I have r of t, looking at that formula, what's my first step? finding our prime of t. So our prime of t is one, two t. How about the magnitude of our prime of t? That would be what? That would be the square root of one plus four t squared. Well, we know we need to get t of t. T of T is R prime of T divided by the magnitude of R prime of T. So if that's the case, then what is T of T? One over root one plus four T squared comma two T over root one plus four T squared. So we're here. We have our prime of t. We have the magnitude of our prime of t. We have the denominator. The top requires me to get t prime of t. So what is t prime of t? The derivative of the first piece, the derivative with respect to t of 1 over the square root of 1 plus 4 t squared comma, the derivative with respect to t of 2t. Over root 1 plus 4t squared. Can we do that? Well, this is going to require us to use the chain rule. This is going to require us to use the quotient rule. Let's go ahead and jump to technology to help us with some of that computation. So taking the derivative with respect to t of 1 over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared, I get negative 4t over 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves. And I also need to do the derivative of the second slot, which is the derivative of 2t over root 1 plus 4t squared. So again, let's go to the app to help us with that. Derivative of 2t over the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. Again, not difficult to do, just tedious. 
So in the interest of time, we'll let technology save us some time. So that's two over one plus four T squared to the three halves. So that's T prime of T. So we're making progress here. So what do I need for curvature? Again, our definition yields this rule, the magnitude of T prime of T. I need to find that magnitude divided by the magnitude of the speed, which I'll need to go ahead and get curvature. So let's collect our information and see what needs to happen next. So here's the information that we need to continue with our problem of determining the curvature of this parabola. So looking at our formula, we recognize I need the magnitude of T prime of T. And the magnitude of T prime is the square root of T prime dot T prime, which is the square root negative 4T times negative 4T is 16T squared. 1 plus 4t squared to the 3 halves squared is 1 plus 4t squared cubed. Plus 2 squared is 4, also over 1 plus 4t squared cubed. Which you'll notice upstairs, then I have the square root of 16t squared plus four, I'm gonna write it as four plus 16t squared, just so it's a little easier for you to see. And then downstairs, what do I have? What's our story? I have one plus four t squared cubed is my common denominator under that square root. So one plus four t squared to the three halves. So we can do some algebra to clean this thing up a little bit. So let's continue with the magnitude of T prime of T. Let's factor a four out upstairs. So that's the square root of four times the square root of one plus four T squared divided by one plus four T squared to the three halves. Well, root four, of course, is two. Now, now think about how this is gonna work. Upstairs, I have one plus four T squared square root, which is really one plus four T squared to the one half power. And downstairs, I have one plus four T squared to the three halves power. So the downstairs denominator is what? Is three halves. The upstairs denominator is one half. So the difference between 3 halves and 1 half is 1. So what is that going to give me? 2 over 1 plus 4t squared to the first. 2 over 1 plus 4t squared. Okay, so we're doing pretty well here. So can we finish this now? Curvature is magnitude of t prime of t divided by magnitude of r prime of t. Curvature is magnitude of t prime of t divided by magnitude of r prime of t. The magnitude of t prime of t is 2 over 1 plus 4t squared divided by, what's the magnitude of r prime of t? Root 1 plus 4t squared. So let's do a little bit of algebra here, namely 2 over 1 plus 4t squared to the first times the reciprocal 1 over the square root, which I will write as what? There's no squared here. Which I will write as 1 over 1 plus 4t squared to the 1 half power. Again, 2 over 1 plus 4t squared times 1 over the square root. So what is that going to give me? Curvature equals two divided by one plus four T squared to the one and a half, three halves power. But what I wanna do next is I wanna discuss the osculating circle.
So the circle of curvature at the vertex, what will that be? So here's where we are. We have R of T is T comma T squared. We've developed our formula for curvature and we want to find the equation of the osculating circle at T equals zero. So what is the curvature at zero? That's two over one plus four times zero squared to the three halves, which is two over one plus zero to the three halves, which is two over one, which is two. So the curvature is two. So remember the radius of the osculating circle is one over the curvature. So the radius of the osculating circle is one half. Now, where is that circle located? Again, at t equals zero. So let's take a look at our picture. So here is our picture at t equals zero, x equals zero, y equals zero. Here's our point of interest. The osculating circle is centered on the concave side. The radius is actually in the direction of the unit normal vector, but I argue here it's obvious where the unit normal vector is. The unit tangent vector is horizontal, so the unit normal vector would be vertical. So the center of this osculating circle is on the y-axis. And we said that that radius is one half, so the center of this circle will be one half units in the y direction. So let's go ahead and let's add that point. Right, so the x value is zero, the y value is one half. and the z value is zero. So there's the center of our circle and it has radius one half. So let's think about how we get the equation of that circle. So center, zero one half radius equals one half. So remembering our idea, Right, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals radius squared gives me the equation x minus zero squared plus y minus a half squared equals a half squared. So in the xy coordinate system, the equation of the osculating plane would be x squared plus y minus one half squared equals a quarter. And let's take a quick look at that. So again, it was t, t squared, so we know the equation is y equals x squared. There's the center at 1 half, and you can see how it is in the same plane, and it is kissing that graph in exactly one point, and it is bending at the same speed that the graph is bending.